Welcome to Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast, episode number 188. Today we had a very special guest, Al Ingalls, and we talk about stressful lives and how to have pressure-free living. Don't miss it. Welcome back to Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast. This is the only podcast that shows you how to leverage polarity intelligence, an essential competency for healthcare leaders and the missing logic in healthcare, so you can create healthy healing organizations and become a thriving, resilient, and unstoppable healthcare leader. We are your hosts, Tracy Christofferson and Michelle Troset. We've been best friends and colleagues for over 30 years. And during that time, we coached healthcare leaders across North America around how to create healthy healing organizations. Today, we coach healthcare leaders and leadership teams to live thriving, resilient, and balanced lives, combat burnout, and create the best places to give and receive care. This podcast is for the unsung hero of healthcare, the healthcare leader. We want you to know we see you and we'll be here for you each week. In this podcast, we're going to challenge healthcare's industry norms, flip limiting beliefs, and share proven strategies so you can be your best self at working at home live and lead intentionally and experience well-being and joy. We are glad you are here and look forward to sharing the journey with you. If you aren't totally convinced this podcast is for you, just listen to a few episodes and convince yourself. Welcome everyone to Healthcare's Missing Logic Podcast. This is Tracy. And this is Michelle. Welcome back. Yeah, it's great to be in the studio today. Yes. We've been talking about pressure-free living today. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Pressure-free living. Doesn't that sound awesome? (laughs) It does. I think we just learned a little bit about how to do that. (laughs) We did. We did. Yeah. We had a great guest, an acquaintance, and, uh, you know, just a a lovely lady, lovely lady doing some really phenomenal work and just feel really blessed to be able to share that with you today. Yeah. And I think it's such a great example of how something can grow. So this was something that kind of started small and it's growing around the world and we're really happy for her and had been kind of watching her and said, Hey, you want to join us and tell our listeners what you're doing to create pressure-free living, because yeah. we think our healthcare leaders could use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it was great to talk with Elle today. Yeah. So let me tell you a little bit about L Ingalls. She is a high-performance coach who specializes in helping individuals and groups of any size level their performance without the stress and burnout often experienced by high achievers. Gee, we don't know any of those, do we, Tracy? Mm, Just a couple. (laughs) (laughs) For nearly 40 years, Al has been teaching mental toughness techniques. In 2010, she created a science-based method called the pressure-free method that reduces stress, anxiety, and overwhelm without having to slow down, take time off, or add to your to-do of your day. She's a former Forbes coach council member, and she has coached C-suite executives, business owners, health professionals, athletes, musicians, and high-achieving students. She has trainings to she has given trainings to teams of Fortune 500 companies, financial institutions, international conventions, medical symposiums, and educational institutions. In addition to live coaching and speaking, she has created online courses and a certification program. She's the author of Pressure Free Parenting, available on Amazon, and an upcoming book, The Pressure Free CEO. So without further ado, here is our guest, Al Ingalls. Well, welcome, Al Ingalls, to the Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast. We are so excited to have you as our guest today. Uh, we're starting out really great, so I'm so happy to be here with you, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You listeners have no idea how happy you are for this moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were practicing what we're going to talk about yes, today. Yes, we were. We were. And as those of you that are watching us on our YouTube channel can see that Tracy and I are sporting our Ingalls picture shirt. And the truth is, is that uh, our families are connected and we've been friends. And uh, Al's family has actually done some video production for Missing Logic in the yep. past. And my son and Al's son are very good friends. And so it just shows you there's a lot of connections in the world. Oh, yeah. Yes. Beautiful. So it's really beautiful. We, I know you so surprised me with those shirts. It was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, let's get started because we are really looking forward to having you on our show, Al. And, you know, as you're aware, Tracy and I, we work with healthcare leaders and they have been experiencing extreme stress for the last few years. And uh, since the before the pandemic, certainly during the pandemic, and even now with all of the fallout and everything that's happening in the world. And But before we dive into the amazing work you do, um, how would you define stress? That is a great question. Um, when I'm working with my clients, when I'm giving any sort of workplace training or speaking, I define stress um, in a very specific way. Uh, we have all kinds of stressors and challenges, and some people refer to that as stress. But when I'm talking about stress, I specifically mean when we release stress hormones. So when we've gone into fight or flight and released too much of our stress hormones in our bodies. So that's that's what I call being stressed. Anything else is, is you might be experiencing a challenge or a stressor, but whether or not you trigger the fight or flight stress response determines whether or not your body and mind are actually stressed. I love that. Me too. So I'm yeah. I'm going to ask, how do we know? Yeah. What's the symptom do you of know? releasing a stress okay. hormone? Because I'm sure I've so, experienced it. <laughs> yes. And, I just and haven't you know, known maybe that's what it is. <laughs> you, you have such great questions because this... Um, Everyone is different. Everyone's unique. So for example, for you, it might be that you feel your face turn red or even feel like you're going to faint a little bit or your hands are getting sweaty or cold. If you have cold hands and feet, that's a sign. Um, for some people, it's a lot of tension up in here. They're starting to get a headache or a migraine or their jaw is tense. Um, some people immediately feel their heart rate going. So they can tell that something's a little off because their heart rate is beating. I have clients, though, whose throat actually closes right up. Like it feels like they can't breathe. Um, and then for some people, it's very gut-centered. So they will feel nauseous or their stomach kind of feels weird. Um, they may turn to eating or they can't eat. Um, but I've had people like have instant diarrhea or be really, really constipated. So anything in the gut region. So I, I kind of mm. think head, chest area, or gut, that can be some of your signs. And you can also look for tension in your body. So, you know, are mm -hmm. you clenching your jaw? Mm -hmm. um, are your shoulders going up? Is your, are your abs tight? I was even working with a fellow. I was in his office coaching him, and his tension was in his toes. His toes were curled up inside his shoes. And I'm trying to find the tension because I can feel it, Right but I can't see it really on his body. And finally, I just kind of glanced down at the floor and I go, oh, it's in your toes. He goes, yeah. And he wraps his legs like around the rings of his chair and rungs of his chair. Like he's always really tight down low. So no, if you're feeling tension, if your body feels tight, oh, and here's the other one, the 11 line. If you have two lines, you know, some lines between your eyebrows here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, so everybody goes, Oh, that's an, people will say like, okay, so that's an aging Boring. thing. You need collagen Botox or whatever. No, 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 no. It's actually a stress deal because when we're under pressure, we will tighten our face. We'll get concerned. We'll get worried. So mm -hmm. the facial features will come close and get tight. And so, and it's funny. I mean, you're on camera a lot. I'm on camera a lot. Sometimes you're like, you'll make a mistake if you're recording something and then to catch your face, like when you've made the mistake, it's like, oh crap. You know, it's like that, <laughs> that tight face. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. I think what I've noticed, so this may be too much information, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I think what Here's I, a really. Well, I think what I've noticed is since menopause, mm. I'll have a hot flash. When you're stressed, oh, right? when I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is I'll a really it. good point. That's Let, let's same just take kind that of... for a moment because, yeah, e either your healthcare workers, either maybe women who are menopausal or postmenopausal or yeah. pre perimenopausal, or they mm -hmm. work with people who are. Okay. <laughs> so yep. here's yeah. something really, really important to know. I have a client, I had a client, she is a nutrition coach, Hazimoto specialist. 
And she shared with me that the 10 years prior to actually going through menopause, if you're frying your adrenals in that 10 year period, like you're very stressed, menopause will be early, earlier, and could be very difficult. Like you can have a lot of symptoms. I'm just going to get raw and real here because this is healthcare and this is real health. So I started creating this method when I was 47 and I was going through some perimenopausal symptoms and, um, I started using the method on myself and those symptoms completely dissipated, like didn't have them at all until nine years later, mm. nine years. And then I went through menopause. Wow. wow. So being able to control your stress hormones affects all the other hormones, the whole endocrine system. So yeah. basically what I have created and what I teach people to do is break the stress cycle. I refer to it as a stress cycle because there are two floods of hormones that go out at different times. And once you release the first flood, it's going to take males up to nine hours before the cells have dissipated all that, all the stress hormones out of the cells and they're actually back functioning normally. But for females, it's an up to 24 hour cycle. Mm. So there's a huge wow. gender difference. And this explains a lot, right? I mean, think about it. When we get real, if, if you have an argument with a male, if you're a female, then a few hours later, the male is totally cool. He's probably forgotten what you even argued about. And you are still hot. <laughs> you're still upset. Literally. <laughs> is that what you call it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, even the next morning. Uh, in fact, we were doing an event that your, your son, you know, our collective sons were all at. And a 22 year old young man came up to me and he goes, he goes, I think I need to work with you because my girlfriend broke up with me Saturday morning because I couldn't remember what we fought about on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I didn't say this. I didn't say it. I was like, oh, wow, well, maybe she's not the right girl for you. <laughs> but, you know, like, but that's the thing. Yeah. And, yeah. and that wow. to me, I did an article like years ago on LinkedIn about the true reason for the glass ceiling, I believe is this. Because you'll hear people say behind people's back, even to their face, oh, she's so hormonal. Oh, we can't promote her mm. because we can't really trust her emotional response. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. this is really a serious reason why women hit the glass ceiling. I've even worked with female executives that said, I'd really love to promote this woman, but in certain meetings, she, she can't control her emotions. And that's because probably early in the day, she just triggered trying to get her kids to school. So she's already in fight or flight before she gets to the office. Yeah, so most yeah. of us are never showing our true selves. In fact, I love my young clients. I, I actually coach as young as 10. <laughs> and they, they tend to be brilliant <laughs> kids, right? High achievers. But I had a 17-year-old say, Mrs. Ingalls, you're helping people find the real them, the real person yeah. inside. And she goes, the biggest gift you've given me is myself, not my stressed mm. self, but my real self. And so fight or flight keeps us... Mm. In, in this kind of strange world that we're all living in mm -hmm. right now. Because if you think of 24 yeah. hours, what woman is not in fight or flight? I certainly right. was yeah. until 2010. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's kind of a long answer to your <laughs> question. But. No, that's, no, that's great. great. That's great. Yeah. We're, all about, we're all about teaching early warning signs. So now we'll just add the stress response to the well, list. Well, there we go. That's right. Yeah, we we're, we're, response. Well, when we work... Yeah, when we work with healthcare leaders, a part of the process is to identify your early warning signs, right? When you're overemphasizing oh, yeah. something in your life and neglecting another aspect of it, mm -hmm. and um, and this is can can certainly be what we always say: What do you see? What are you hearing? What are you feeling? You know, what are yeah. you doing? That that can be yeah. an early warning sign. So so this would be um, yeah. some of that. Well, and and because whole, once you've triggered, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, you go. Let's once go. you've triggered fight or flight you, um, all of those things, you're not seeing correctly. You're not hearing correctly. You can't even really hear a person fully hear them. So that's why people today feel underappreciated. Staff members will feel very underappreciated if they have a stressed out boss, um, because that person can't see, hear, or appreciate them. They're so locked in, 
their own feelings. They're so self-absorbed and they might not think they are because this is how they've been operating most of their life. I work Mm -hmm. mostly with type A high achievers and sometimes they'll come to me and say, um, I don't want to not be a type A, (laughs) right? I, I like that. I like, you know, leading the world. Like that's what they like to do. And so I love to joke and say, well, you're not going to become a type B. You're going to become a type P, which is pressure-free, present, and productive. At a level you couldn't awesome. even dream because when your brain goes, when you go into fight or flight, your cortex and your hippocampus thinking, remember, and it shuts down. That's why like you get into a social situation and you can't remember people's names. It's, you're not stupid, right? We're not, why can't we remember the name of the person we just met? Because most of us have a little social anxiety, so we weren't fully present when we met that other person. We shook their hand. And so five seconds later, it's like, oh, crap. What was their name? Jim, John. It starts with a J, right? And it's, yeah. it's just yeah. because your hippocampus yeah. is shut down. And so, yeah, that's yeah. really, really huge. And when I think about healthcare workers, um, you know, sometimes there's a lot of talk about physicians in bedside manner. It's not just that they're so... Um, involved in what they're doing over here that they can't really be personable. It's that fight or flight prevents that ability of human to really be able to interact with another human. We, we also tighten the front of our body. So one of my simple tools is just to relax your abs. If you simply relax your abs, you actually tell your brain you're okay and there's no reason to go into fight or flight. And when you relax your abs deeply, It relaxes the whole front of your body, which is body armor, because we tighten to protect ourselves, including our throats. If you ever take a self-defense class, like this is the death bot, okay? So so this all (laughs) tightens. to. We're trying to protect ourselves. So when you relax your abs and relax the front of your body, your voice gets more full. I mean, my kids never want to hear the pinched not very nice voice, the stressed out voice, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like, mm-hmm, people don't respond mm-hmm. well to that. And they don't respond to well, you know, if you're, if you're trying to have an interaction with a, a patient or client or a sales situation, any of that, if your body is tight in the front, you're actually repelling people away from you. So that one little trick of just relaxing the abs and We've got people today telling you to keep your abs tight all the time, like trainers and people. <laughs> Let me ask it. So, so let's get real. They, and also so suck true. it in, like suck right, it in. Yeah. You should look thin. Do, if you have a pet, if you have a dog or a cat, do they ever suck it in to be thin? <laughs> and do they? That's what I can see. Do they? Do they ever? Do they ever do abs and crunches to tone their abs? No, they do not. No. They stretch to tighten this, to elongate it and tighten it. So the other thing we're doing is we're turning into C curve people with our phones. Watch people walk. They're like their spines are in a C, and so. Another easy trick that um, instantly will tell your brain that you're okay is to grab your butt and pull it behind you. So if you have a tail, if you, we used to have tails, I guess. If you had a tail, it can wag, okay? So when you're in that position, which can feel very vulnerable for some people, you're more on your hamstrings. That's an instant neuroscience trick that tells your brain you must be fine. Because if you weren't, you're going to tuck your tail just like a dog does to protect yourself. So if you're sitting on your butt working, your nervous system's going like, look out, be aware, just be alert. It's it's thinking that you have to be afraid because you've tucked your tail. So when you get your tail back, it's another, sometimes my, my tools that I teach people come in three types, body, mind, and life design. So relaxing abs and and your tail wagging, those are like two body tools, quick and easy. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. if you really dig into the stress response, which is my expertise, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a therapist. What I do is help people break anxiety biologically. So, and depression. I have clients who've been depressed their entire lives and in a matter of weeks, it has broken. Same thing with anxiety. 
because it's the biology informing the psychology. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's Mm -hmm. missing from every textbook on psychology, missing from most mental health practices. We're looking, you know, we solve the problem with therapy and drugs. But actually, if we get deep into the biology, it's, it's miraculous what happens. My clients have miracle, miracles happen. No more IBS, no more colitis, no more headaches, no more migraines. I have clients who've had migraines their whole life and they never have one again. And it's just because we're messing ourselves up all the time with these stress hormones. It's the number one cause of all Mm -hmm. mental and physical chronic disease are the release of these hormones. We think about it Mm -hmm. with the heart, right? You'll say stress is the silent killer, but it affects every cell of our body. So, and I joked with you women this morning, I forgot to bring my makeup on my trip. So this is kind of me (laughs) raw and real if you're watching the video. And um, (laughs) if if we were in 2010, like I, I had stress acne from stress hormone release. And I had eczema all over my hands, all over. Like these fingers were, knuckles were cracked and bleeding for 35 years. As a violinist, that's very painful and unsightly. And in a matter of eight weeks of using the method on myself, all of that cleared up. I actually cried on my kitchen floor because I could touch Mm -hmm. the skin on this particular knuckle for the first time in 35 years. If you're listening, that's wow. my middle finger. I actually pointed at my husband. I'm going, honey, look, look. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's my skin. It's like my real skin. I can finally touch my skin, you know? And I Amazing. think many of us live with a lot of pain and suffering. And we'll think it's genetic or it's just the way I am. And that's not true. A lot of it is just the result of these hormones releasing in our bodies all the time. And I, I, it pains me so much to see people suffering. Immune system, too. Mm. That's, can we dive into immune system for a moment? Because this is sure. the immune system. This is the immune system decade, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what, what's happening? For sure. Um, so I geek out on reading research, and I read a lot of research from other countries as well as stuff done in the U.S., There's, um, when you go into fight or flight and it actually made headline news, there's a little protein called interferon gamma and they mentioned it during Mm -hmm. COVID when, when it first started. Mm -hmm. So interferon gamma is a little protein. When you release the first flood of stress hormones, the catecholamines, chief one is adrenaline, your immune system, that particular protein actually kind of drops in the system up to 90%. There's like a thing that goes down. And then it comes back up later. The second flood of hormones goes out when your body and mind is like, okay, no more threat. Everything's cool. We now have to fix the cells we've damaged, which means neurons and our extremities. So that flood of hormones goes out. Those are glucocorticoids. And when that flood goes out, it can drop the immune system up to 40%. So you get two big drops in your immune system every time you go into fight or flight. The way I like to explain it just in, in you know, layman's terms, if you will, is that we confuse the crap out of our immune system. And then we expect it to operate correctly. But I, when I got really honest with myself, I would trigger the stress response like 10 to 20 times just trying to get everybody out the door in the morning, get everything done and, and everybody and. I'll never forget this one time, like everything's ready. And we get in the car, we had a really old car (laughs) and we are hockey players, kids. And it was a cold night and the frost was on the inside of the windshield as well as the outside of the windshield. They do not design the scraper for the inside of the windshield. So I'm going (laughs) like as fast as hard as can. And what are the boys in the back doing? Look, mommy, it's snowing <laughs> in the car, right? Because I'm like going so fast. And meanwhile, I'm so triggered. I'm so triggered. It's like I didn't get in a car accident because I was so, you know, how am I going to get everybody to school? So debunking all of that and figuring out what causes you to trigger fight or flight is the key. So I have a three step mm. method. I'll share it right here if you like. Yeah, that's sure. Great. Go for it. Okay, so three simple steps. 
and the, they're in order very specifically. And, and if you skip step one, to me, it, you, you really need to do all three. So the first are targets. What are you aiming for? I spend a lot of time with my clients in the beginning because sometimes if you're in fight or flight, you can't envision a future for yourself. You can't. And you can't even like dream a little bit. So I really work to try to get a little bit of dreaming going. So it's like, okay, we can just dream here. What do you want? If you have a chronic disease, could you want it to be gone? If you have a mental issue that you've had for years, could it be gone? Like, can you be open to the possibility they could shift or change? So targets are, what do you want? Or you can submit it like, I don't want this. One of mine is that my father in his 30s had high blood pressure, diabetes. He died of a second heart attack. My mother died of cancer, both stress-based diseases. So chronic disease in my family. I would like to have not any of that. <laughs> so I spin yeah. it into, I want to be really healthy without these particular, if I have a predisposition to any of this, I would like to not happen. And I'm going to knock on marble because I can't find wood. That <laughs> I made it to 60 without any of that. I messed up my body for a long time until age 47, but I feel like I have a new leash on life now that I've gotten myself clean. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you want? Those are targets. They can be performance targets, money, career. They can be relationship. I have so many people clean up their relationships because they're finally not in such a bad mood all the time or angry. Anger can really mess up our relationships. Stress messes our relationships up. It causes divorces. It's like a really bad thing. And people don't think of it that way, but that's the underlying thing. And then of course, health, mental health, physical health. So those are, that's your first step is to just identify a couple mm -hmm. things that are so important to you and maybe feel impossible. I love to open up possibility for people. Second step are triggers. So triggers are what makes you feel any emotion that could possibly release these stress hormones. So the emotions, I like to use a lot of alliteration so it's easy for my clients to remember. So I use A words, angry or annoyed which falls on a continuum. You could be just a little bit annoyed, annoyed, and then finally full-blown angry. And by the way, in, in healthcare setting, but I just interviewed two really amazing, um, one's a health coach, uh, a physician and lawyer in UK, and then a CEO of hospitals in Hawaii on my leadership series. And they gave me some really inside scoop into what's happening in the healthcare, the, the stress level of the healthcare systems, both in the UK mm -hmm. and the US. And, um, and some of the stuff that happens just, it just, I, I cried. I'm like, why is that going on? Like how people treat each other. Well, when you're stressed, you treat each other poorly. Yeah. That's just yep. what yep. happens. So, and also one person's anger is another person's annoyance. Our mm -hmm. continuum is different with every individual. So someone might just be, think they're just being annoyed at something and another person can go, wow, they're so angry. So that's mm -hmm. another thing that's interesting. Um, of course, anytime you're anxious or afraid, any fears, um, ashamed, that's an interesting one, but I'm sure you can think of something that you're ashamed about and it just loops in your head now and then and sends you down a downward spiral. It could have even happened when you were a child or it was something that happened to you that caused you shame. I had a horrible thing happen in junior high. I was a junior high cheerleader. I was in the dressing room changing. I'm just going to go for it here. We've got healthcare people. So. <laughs> so I'm, in the locker room. I'm in the locker room changing. And, and back then, for the most part, girls' underwear was just like white or cream colored, Right. But I had just gotten this like really cool underwear, <laughs> like <laughs> patterned. <laughs> so, you know, you put the bloomers, you put the bloomers over the underwear, right? Well, I was changing and I had my skirt on, like I did my top stuff. I had my skirt on, but I was just about to put my bloomers on. And one of the girls saw my underwear and mm. four girls took my arms and legs and carried me out in front of the crowd in the gym. With my skirt oh flipped my. up to show my underwear. Like crazy, right? I'm sure I'm probably friends with those four girls on Facebook to this day. <laughs> okay. But I can't, 
I don't remember which four it was. Like I blocked all that. I don't remember. I remember the, the horrible humiliation. And then they brought yes. me back in the locker room and just dropped me on the floor. And I just remember being on that floor and I had to make a decision. Was I going to put on my bloomers and go out there and cheer? Or I was going to, going to just cry on the floor. And I just pulled on those silly bloomers and I just went out there and cheered. I didn't care. So it's like, but those, that was such shame that I, and then I had mm-hmm. to walk around school and I was like, well, you know, they yeah. were graphic, like graph, you know, <laughs> to choose lines, <laughs> still see the pair today. That's crazy, right? <laughs> it's kind of like these paintings behind me, right? It's like, yeah, hey, right. right. Yeah. Oh, wow. But that's just an example of shame that can just so overwhelm us. Um, and then anytime you argue, so do you have particular things you argue about? A lot of people argue about money. So any hot topic, those, those are, those are the emotions going to help you figure out what's causing you to trigger fight or flight and overexcited mm-hmm. too. And by the way, you'll hear like famous people today. I think Amy Cuddy is one of them. Several famous people say, Oh, turn your, Turn your nervousness into excitement. Okay. That's interesting because my eldest son, who was a college hockey player, he was my first client that really did all this. And he said to me, ha ha, you got to be careful about overexcitement, don't you? And I'm I'm like, yes, you do. Mm -hmm. If you get too overexcited, you won't sleep that night because the second flood of hormones keeps you up. Mm -hmm. So overexcitement is is a part of this, this, you know, what's going on in here. So you want to find what I call the sweet spot of your emotional range and the sweet spot of your athletic heart rate. If you work out, because if you charge up too high, you'll trigger the stress response and you actually do more damage to your body than your workout is trying to do for you. So I, I work with a lot of athletes and we find that sweet spot and the other thing you have to look out for is like environmental things like sounds, smells. I'm a professional musician. I'm very environmentally sensitive, especially to sound. I have the headphones in because there's stuff going on out there. <laughs> so distractions. Um, when I'm working with, with runners on the starting line, the starting gun can pop mm-hmm. their adrenals. And that's why they hit the wall. Even in a short race, they hit that two thirds of the way and they're done. Like they're, they just can't, they hardly can finish. And that's because the starting gun for most people, if you hear that pop, that causes mm-hmm. your heart rate to go right then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that all making sense? Like, oh yes. yeah. yeah, all that makes sense. sense. Yep. yep. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Okay. So now let's get to, so you've identified your triggers, by the way, you may have a whole ton and it's like, just be patient. You're just learning this. So pick a couple at a time to work with. Right? Yeah. I'm here for you. Yeah. I'm super here for you because <laughs> I tend to be one of those people that beat myself up because I'm, I want it to be faster. Right. And no, we have to be patient. We, we spent all these decades creating this mess. And now we have to unwind it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Step three. Let's face it. Humans are messy. We're just a, really messy. Um, we are. <laughs> third step are tools and the 10 second solution. So from a resting heart rate, it takes about 10 seconds before the amygdala and the brain can fire, tell your heart rate to charge up and your adrenal glands release that first flood of hormones. 10 seconds is plenty of time to smile. It's plenty of time to put a hand on your belly and relax it and let it all hang out. I'm a 70s girl. (laughs) Let it all hang out. Relax, you know, it's going to be okay. Um, I have over 40 tools I teach my clients. And that's because like we started in the beginning when you asked about, you know, how would I identify? Everyone is different. So I had to build a whole big toolkit for people. And I give all my clients all the tools. Some some people are like, well, your 10-year-olds, do they get, I give them all. Because how do I know which ones are going to work for them? And I'm telling you, some of my youngest students are so brilliant. They'll take one of my tools and make it into this cool graphic on their phone. And they're like fiddling on their phone. And it's just so cool to see how people get creative. So 10 seconds is plenty of time for you to make a valid decision in in yourself and say, 
is this worth messing up my body or mind for nine or 24 hours, depending on gender? Is it really worth that? I remember clearly when I was, by the way, I was in denial that I needed my own course because I thought I was a pretty calm professional. And I've actually gotten <laughs> kudos for that over the years <laughs> from famous musicians. They're like, oh, you're such a, you're one of the most calm symphony execs we've ever seen. And, and I'm like, wow. So what is it? I get annoyed. I don't get angry. I don't get anxious very much, but boy, do <laughs> I get annoyed. I get annoyed. Like right now, there's one thing on the counter. I think I'm pretty OCD that, that is kind of kitty corner. Like it should be straight. My mind wants to see it straight. That could be a trigger for me. So I identified all those things that were making me feel annoyed. Dirty socks in the middle of the floor is a big one. I can't stand it when people just drop things, you know, just an annoyance for me. So that's when I dug in, started using the method on myself, and so much changed. And my breakthrough was at about the eight-week point. Some, I've had a fellow recently, Zin Sales in, um, in Michigan, um, in his 30s, he actually had a breakthrough in four days. And a breakthrough is when you've gone the entire day and you haven't triggered the stress response at all. So then when your head hits the pillow that night, it's like you just hit the reset button. And now during the night, your body is rejuvenating, regenerating. You could see pictures of me from before and you would think I was older 12 years ago than I am now. And it's because I'm not messing it off anymore. My nutrients actually get out to my skin. It's really pretty amazing what can start to happen. So you've got this 10 seconds. That's plenty of time to make that kind of qualifying decision and say, no, I'm worth it. But that's the biggest thing that I think I do with my clients. There is a real lack of self-worth today in our society. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't help. This, this little box doesn't help, especially the teens no. and 20, 30-somethings. There's so much comparison. Yeah. There's, there's so much that makes them feel that they are um, even worthless. Like I hear that from clients. They'll say to me too, they'll say, I think my brain is broken. I get this from a lot of um, clients who are doing a lot of weed. or in, And do you know that the biggest call to disease, um, what is it, um, prevention, um, overdose prevention and stuff is melatonin in children. People are giving melatonin to children to try and go to sleep. Sleep is the most natural thing a human should be able to do. But we're having to drug our children to go to sleep. There's something very wrong if that is what's going on in our society. So you finally, and that's one of the biggest benefits of the pressure-free method, is you finally get a real night's sleep. Your body's rejuvenating, regenerating. And I will get texts from clients like, I finally did it. I had my breakthrough day. I had a 16-year-old hockey player. He goes, I woke mm -hmm. up this morning with the most focused energy I've ever felt. Now, focused energy in a 16-year-old boy is a very good thing for those of you who are boy moms. <laughs> it's like, yes, <laughs> yeah, that's what we sure. want. <laughs> Focus anything. <laughs> we want that focused energy. So, um, so getting, you know, going through your day Ma learning your triggers, like figuring out what you get triggered about, and then noticing it and making that decision and saying, no, you can just put your hand right on your belly and say, no, I'm worth more than that. I, I have a well, couple of things that I say are in my, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say this really resonates with us because in one of our pillars in the dynamic balance effect is mindful choices. And we talk yes, frequently yes. about making that pause and making mindful choices related to your values. Or <clears throat> And this is just another example, if you're really aware of your stress response, to make that choice. And I like how you said, yeah. is it worth it? Is it worth it for me to release and kind of go into this state that is going to yeah. have... A negative consequence. Well, they're habits. They're habits. Yeah, right. they're habits that are habits of reaction. Yeah, yep. they're, they're habits, habits of reaction. To the stress. Yep, to the str that's our response. It's our habit to respond that way. So it just perpetuates Correct. until you can halt it. Right, like you have to just yes. make that. You have to. And say, I what love choice that you said that. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that because 
And it's not just the habits you've built in your lifetime, but when you were even in utero, you were building habits of reaction. Mm -hmm. Every time your mother went into fight or flight, you did. Every time you heard a loud noise outside of you, outside of your mom, you did, you went into fight or flight. You heard arguing, like any of that. And, and also think about it, it's like generations old. And it's not just the people who raised mm -hmm. you, but anyone who's had an influence on you. Yeah. Peers, coaches, teachers, professors, spouses, your own children create habits of reaction in you. And so you're debunking a lot. I'd like to think of it like a big wad of gum is stuck in your hair and you've got to like piece it out, <laughs> you know, like, oh, you know, <laughs> we, I love that. I love that visual. <laughs> that is, that is really, really critical. And so that's the thing that we have to really dig into. And, um, and so, yeah, so 10 second solution, you're using okay. these tools and my tools again, come in three types, body, mind, life design. And it, it just takes a little while for all that to work. Um, mm -hmm. And so I like, these are the things that I, I say are in my faith foundation. One is that um, I provide unconditional love and support for the people I work with because we need that. There's too much conditional love today. Yeah. And then the second thing I have is I truly believe everyone deserves a fulfilling and beautiful life. Yeah. I truly believe that. And, and it may be a difficult life. There may be a lot of challenges in it. But within all of that, there's great beauty. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the yeah. biggest things I have to dig in for some of my clients is because they've just been told they're not enough. So sure. really bringing that forward. And then oh, the other thing is open to all possibility because you have no idea what can shift and change for you. You have no idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's really powerful too. Yes. That's great. Love it. That's great. So tell us a little bit about, um, you know, we work with healthcare leaders and help, you know, they have stress both in their personal life and their professional life. And we know mm -hmm. that you wrote yeah. a book on pressure-free parenting, yes. you know, the 10 second solution for high achieving families. Uh, and then you just mentioned how so much of this starts young. Just give us a little taste of, you know, why you started out with parenting for your first book. I'm sure there's going to be more. <laughs> Yeah, I started, I started it. with parenting. I started with pressure free parenting because I had a parent who said, L 2020 threw us under the bus, you need to help us. So, so, and I also was challenged by a mentor of mine to come into a program of his and write a book in 90 days. So I wrote that book in 90 days. Um, it has three set sections to it. The first is the method, deeply teaching the method to parents through the eyes of parents and children. Then I have two other sections. One is age-specific stressors all the way from pregnancy through to adult children. And then I took Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, which, by the way, I don't believe is a pyramid today, but I believe it is stacked vertically the same. I think parents, especially of high-achieving families, are hitting on some of the higher ones, but they're actually missing some of the most basic low ones. Children don't mm -hmm. feel very safe today for a lot of reasons. And they're not even being fed properly. Like, I can't believe how some people feed their children. I try not to get on my high horse about it, but like <laughs> food is so important. But a lot of people, I was in a group with some professional moms and like, oh yeah, I fed my kid this. I'm like, you fed that? You fed what? <laughs> like, I just couldn't even believe what I was doing. So that's an issue too. So, um, so yeah, so I really get into that in the book. And I also like we raised our kids on a very low nonprofit salary. So I share some of our stories in there. And my sons all gave permission to share what I share in there. And you'll hear about my youngest son. And I just want to mention him maybe to close out here. And he was 10 when he learned this method from me. And he was having some anger issues and some other issues that were kind of scaring us, honestly. And I was about to bring him to a child psychologist friend of mine. But, and that was the very month I created Pressure Free because my old, older sons wanted me to teach mental toughness to their baseball team. Like that's how this whole thing started. So then I created this whole thing and I started teaching to him. He, he, was, he had an amazing, you know, valedictorian of his class, national merit finalist, not just semi-finalist, but finalist. Um, he decided to go to Columbia. So he was waitlisted, Harvard, Yale, in at Columbia. He, 
his demo reel, because he's a videographer of Columbia, opens with alma mater. So, of course, they all talk. I have an admissions friend, and they all talk to decide which school you're going to go to. And they, so Columbia chose him. He gets to Columbia, has the best friend set ever. He's like, they all just flew into Grand Rapids, Michigan to run this silly race of his. It was ridiculous. But it's like amazing friends, amazing experience. He um, graduated as salutatorian of his class. And in his senior year, year, he ran five marathons in seven months while doing two huge research projects for Columbia. So he's a visiting scholar at Penn. Like if you, if you look him up, it's like, how did this kid do all that? It's because the people I work with tend to have want to or have a wide bandwidth. You cannot operate that way unless you're pressure free. You can't hit on everything. And so I don't share that to say I'm a proud mother. I don't even use the word pride. He did that. But this method unlocked him at a level that was so extraordinary. And I believe everybody deserves to be unlocked. Imagine the kind of brain power we will have when people are unlocked from fight or flight. I just can't even imagine it. It's going to be phenomenal. And so that's why I'm on this mission. Such great work, really. Oh, and you know what? It. And it's no drugs, no, no you know, drugs. it's just, it's all, it's Nature. just natural. But mm -hmm. you have to, um, you, you have to have the knowledge and you have to have the tools, like you said. So I just, yes. this has been phenomenal, really yeah. very enlightening oh. and something everybody can use. Yeah. Everybody. It's lovely. I mean, really, everybody. It's really, and really you can teach it work. so easily in your family. That's why I did pressure free parenting. Yeah. My upcoming book is the pressure free CEO. Yeah. I lost my dad to his second heart attack. And um, I mean, he, we could have lost him at the first one. And I just really want to help leaders. I really want to help yeah. people yeah. in leadership positions, not, not, and not take it out on their families or their pets or wherever they're taking their stress out. Right. Right. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's great. That's awesome. Yes. Thanks. Well, it's time for the missing questions. Uh, okay. So these, you know, you don't Give have any idea me. what we're going to throw at you. <laughs> Remember that 10 second rule. <laughs> yeah, I think she's got it. I think she's got it. No stress. Okay. Here's the first one. As a musician, what is your favorite musical movie? Oh, my favorite musical movie? Um, Immortal Beloved. Mm -hmm. Wow! A beautiful movie with Isabella. Isabella Rossellini is in it, and it's about Beethoven's wow. life. Very, very beautiful. Oh, awesome! Yeah. Immortal, All beloved. Right. All right. All right. Let's add that to our list, Tracy. Yes. Okay. Second question. We know you have a fun family. We have met all of them. <laughs> what is your favorite family tradition? Um. My favorite family tradition uh, is something that we execute, whether we're two, just the two of us together, like one one on one or the whole family or whatever. Mm -hmm. We always do one more thing. So if we're on vacation, like everybody's done, no, we do one more thing. We stop at one more beach. We, we, we climb one more mountain. We do one more thing. And that's an Ingalls, that's a, definitely an Ingalls trait. Cool. Yeah, it's, I like it's a that. My, my, yeah, great fun. And William asked me about that on our trip recently because we packed, we packed so much in. We you would think we were lovers. We we're at Niagara Falls with our arms around each other. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cute. It was really fun. Oh, that's great. That's, that's so great. special. That's great. Well, our wrap up question has to do with our expertise in polarity intelligence. And okay. what we know about polarities, right, they're interdependent pairs. They appear to be opposite or contradictory, but they need each other. And um, we all have a preference for one pole or the other. It's just natural, right? You have some preferences for, you lean a little bit more one way or a little bit more another. And, uh, and there's that, no right or wrong to that. It's just to be aware of it. Yeah. And so we wanted to ask you, when it comes to the polarity of reflection, and action, where do you, what's your preference? Reflection or action? Um, I've become more reflective the more pressure-free I live. 
but I'm also in my family called the action chick. So I think I definitely need the action chick. <laughs> The action chick. The action chick. All right. Action I like chick. that. I'm going to call yeah. you that from now on. Hey, action chick, you want to go out for lunch? <laughs> and the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. Oh, well, thank you we'll so much, we'll pack in one Al, more thing. For... Yeah, there you go. You... All right. Dinner too, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so uh, much. Yeah. I know our listeners are going to get a lot out of this. And uh, we will definitely stay in touch with you. We'll put your website in our show notes so people know how to find you. Any closing okay, words you want to say before we wrap it up? Um. Just, you know, thinking specifically of healthcare, I just spoke to the Nurses Association of Michigan and um, I just really feel you. I mean, I feel what's going on and, and I think a lot of outsiders have no idea and, um, and it, it's just get the help you need, get the help you need and, um, and know that what you do is truly amazing and um, not always understood and yeah, I just... Have a really soft heart for for that. I've worked with physicians and therapists in my work, and um, yeah, so that's what I would say is that what you do is you deserve to have a beautiful life. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, definitely. absolutely. We yeah. we know that too. Yep, yeah, yep. That's yeah. why we're here trying to work with them as well, right? Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Beautiful. So thanks for that, and uh, your work so is so great. Amazing. What you do. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah. me. This is really fun. Oh, it's great. Uh, it's been great. Yep. And for our listeners out there, that's a wrap for another Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast. And we will see you next time. Yep. Stay safe, stay healthy, and pressure free. enjoyed this episode of Healthcare's Missing Logic podcast, now a top-rated podcast for healthcare leaders. Please share this podcast with other healthcare leaders and anyone else you think would benefit. We are certain that if you found value in it, they will too. If you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any episodes. And also, it would mean the world to us if you took a quick moment to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast player. It helps to get the word out about our podcast and incredible guests. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to watch our podcasts. You can also follow us on our Missing Logic social media channels, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time.